and good morning. Are you ready to start a new week for history? All right. Well, get your sled. We're going to Finland, Sweden, and Norway. Can you imagine three countries in one week that we have to cover? Ooh, we better get a fast sled. So let's get pages 121, 122, 123, and 124. We gotta have four pages tomorrow, today. So make sure you're starting with this page here, okay? And remember that page, uh, let's see, I believe it's this page right here, our uh, quest collector card. Remember that, we had all these questions on here. Well, remember number six was, let me add my notes. Remember number six was the Volga. Remember, we're looking for clues as we're, as we're visiting all these countries, okay? And the longest river in Europe, remember we learned when we were studying Russia, is called the Volga River, and it's located there in Russia. And you should have this written down on your page, okay? So to make sure you have that page out and around you because we're gonna need it. All right, let's go back to this page now. Now we're gonna, Keep a lookout for all these sleds as we work our way through Finland and Sweden and Norway. These are countries that are in Europe. Now, do you like, well actually, let's go back. I think on the back of your uh, quest card, there's a map. Can you look at the map right here? I wanna show you where we're going this week. Now, last week we did Russia. Remember, Russia's big. It's part in Asia and part in Europe. Okay, so we're doing 11. That's gonna be these three countries. You see these countries right here? Let's see if we can zoom in just a little bit. You see these three? Norway, Sweden, and Finland. They're way up here. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and go back. I just wanted you to see where they were on a map. So let me turn my page around, there we go. Now, do you like baseball? Well, in Finland, they play Pesapeo, which is not, which is a lot like baseball. The name means nest ball. The country of Finland has a lot of forests. In fact, 70 to 80% of it is covered with trees. That's a lot of the country. That would be like if you had a pie cut into 10 slices, seven or eight of the 10 would be for the forested part of the country. One more slice of this pie would be for their lakes. Lake Samea is the largest lake in the country and you can find the Samea ringed seal there. Only a little over 300 of them are left in the whole world. See, this is that lake. Lake Samea, and it's frozen. You see they're using those things to drill in there. Look at this. This is a Samea ringed seal. These are the seals that live in, at this lake, and there's only about 300 of them that are left. And here's them playing Pesapeo. Let's look back at our um, collector card, because I think there was a question about that on there. Look down here at... Number nine, in which country do they play the game Pesapeo? You remember what country that was called? Let's look back. Finland. So let's go back to our card and let's write Finland there on number eight, uh, number nine. Which country do they play that game? In Finland. Let's use good handwriting. Remember, it's the name of a place, so it's a proper noun. So we have to use a capital F. Finland, very good. Make sure you write that on that page, okay? All right, let's go back to this page. Okay, let's change, let's turn the page. Let's go to page 122, read a little bit more about Finland and Sweden and Norway. Vikings 
were a people from Northern Europe who are most known for accounts of their lives written about a thousand years ago. There are still stone markers that can be found at their burial places in Sweden. They were mostly farmers and traders, but are often remembered for their fighting and their beautifully carved ships. The name Viking may have meant pirate or adventurer in an old language. We don't really know what it meant. You know the uh, that cartoon, How to Train Your Dragon, those are Vikings in there. Here's a picture of a Viking ship. It's in a museum. You see how beautiful their ships are with these little curved things on there? They're pretty big. This is actually a pretty small one. They had much bigger ones. This is a, some kind of a stone. It might be a burial marker for a Viking. This is a reindeer. And this little girl's feeding this reindeer. They have reindeer up there. Sweden can be very cold in the winter and even colder in the northern part of the country. How do you survive in countries that are really cold in the winter? Well, the Sami people of northern Sweden and Finland herd reindeer that gives them milk, meat, and skins for clothing. You won't find Viking things only in Sweden. There's a lot of Viking culture in Norway too. If you go to Oslo, <coughs> the capital city, there's a Viking ship museum with two actual Viking ships from over a thousand years ago. And even though the people of Norway speak a language called Norwegian, almost all of them learn English as well. So you can enjoy a nice chat with new friends. So they will also speak English over there too in Norway. But it's cold over there. It's a cold place. Let's see if we can find some pictures of Norway. I'll bring up some pictures here. Well, maybe if my computer will let me bring them up. Norway is a really, really neat place. I love to look at the pictures from Norway. Here we go. Let's look at the images from Norway. Hmm, oh wow. Yeah, that looks mighty cold. That's a picture of somewhere in Norway. There's another picture of Norway. Would you like to go there? I would. Look how pretty that is. There's a little village. Look at that waterfall. Beautiful pictures of Norway. There's another little village. I see a church. I think that's a church. It looks like it has a steeple right there, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, let's go back to our page. All right, let's go to the next page. Here we go. Where does power come from to bring us electricity? Well, there's many ways that power can be created, including solar power and wind power. In 1911, Norway built the hydroelectric power station at Vimork. Hydro means water. And these kinds of power plants use the force and movement of water to make electricity. So here's the Vmork hydroelectric plant. Get there at all their ways that they get electricity. These are turbines, these big engine looking things. These are turbines in the electric plant. That's pretty neat, isn't it? It makes electricity. Do you find it amazing that you can flip a light switch and have electricity? Or does that seem kind of normal to you? Just a little over a hundred years ago, there wouldn't have been any electric power. What do you think the world would have been like then? What would it have been like? You wouldn't have had a computer, no internet, no video games, no lights. 
Your stove would have been run by fire. Your lights would have been run by fire with lanterns. Wow. Lots of things we wouldn't have. We'd have to make coffee on the stove with fire. You'd have to use a candle if you wanted to go and do something. No toasters. No microwaves. No light switches. No plugs. No cell phones. What do you think about that? Do you think that would have been a good time to live in or a bad time? I think it would have been a good time because then you had to trust more in the, the natural things that God gave you. All right, I want you for your thankful time today, write something on your thankful page that you're thankful for. Maybe you want to say you're thankful for electricity. All right, make sure you do that. But let's look at this page. We've got one more page to look at today. It says, find out where the power for your city is generated either from a helper at your local library or from other people where you live. If you can visit the power plant or even drive by it, that could make for an interesting field trip. You see all these pictures here? These are places where electricity is created. Now, I'm gonna get on here and I'm gonna see if I can find I'm going to find out where your electricity comes from. Maybe. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can find out where it comes from. Hmm. This shows that they're fixing to build one, or maybe it's old and they already did, I don't know. New power plant, groundbreaking in Sherman. Now this, you see what date this is? This is from the year 2012. So this is pretty old, this is about eight years old. So they must have one already. So let's put this, let's put power plants, Sherman, Texas. if we can find one. Let's see. Let's see if we can find a website. Panda Sherman Power Project. Maybe this one. Let's see if we can find out. Look at that picture. I guess that's near Sherman. Wow. That's a cool picture, isn't it? That's the Panda Sherman Power Project. I don't know where that is, but it's somewhere in Sherman. Maybe you could ask your mom or dad and ask them to drive you by a power plant in Sherman around where you live and you could look and see what kind of things they use. Now this here is, I don't know where this is, but it's powered by water. So they use water to create electricity on this one. This one is created by a nuclear reactor. Now don't ask me what that is, but it has something to do with atoms and nuclear science and all that kind of stuff. Now these, if you ever have seen these, these are like windmills and they produce power by the wind. When the wind blows these things around, it sends uh, electrical pulses, I guess, or some kind of something down these and it produces power. Isn't that neat? Now these are solar panels. What these do is they capture the energy from the sun and it produces electricity, it produces energy that neat? We can get power from the sun. We can get it from the wind. 
we can get it from the water and from different whatever we get it from this from I don't know this is above me Isn't that neat where we get our electricity from and all of our power aren't you thankful for it well make sure you write something down on your thankful page and maybe ask your mom or dad if they could take you and just drive you by a power plant so you can look at it okay all right that's all for today